waiting for the and hello everyone good morning good morning um and oh, of course now it's looking jerky again all right i will check back in after i do an introduction but hello everyone i am rebecca from chemnitz and welcome what <laughs> and welcome to the june 2020 chemnitz dialogue live stream and yeah it 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 the buffering like went buffering um hmm okay let me check because all of a sudden my computer was like "Ooh, hello uh okay what else can i close i don't need you open I'll redo my introduction in one moment, um, but I'm looking because every once in a while the feed looks fine and every once in a while it looks jerky. So I just want to make sure that I can hear the audio. Uh, okay, what else can I close? Okay, so the audio looks sounds good. Um, all right, I will restart my introduction. Hi everyone, I am Rebecca from Chemnitz and welcome to the June 2020 Chemnitz Dialogue live stream. Every month I pick a new inspiration photo and we use that to dye some yarn. But since this is a dialogue, I'm inviting all of you at home to join me and dialogue. And in about a month when I post a recap of all the yarn that I dyed in this video, I, I will feature some of your projects. So share your rainbowlicious yarn that you dyed this month, inspired by this photo right here, uh, with the hashtag Chemnitz Dialogue on Instagram, or you can, there's a Facebook post linked in the video description. You can reply to that post with a like photo comment, and I'll pick from those and feature some. But there are so many ways you can play with a rainbow, and we're gonna explore a bunch of different versions today. So I am really excited. Uh, good morning. Okay, I'm fine. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. All right, so I, just like last year, um, I wanted to pick a rainbow for June to show, to honor and show support for Pride Month. Um, and in with this, I, in keeping with this, I have made donations this month to two organizations. Um, one is the Trevor Project, which is a hotline um, for LGBTQ and questioning youth and young adults. And so it's great that there is always someone there to listen because, and like as, as speaking as a parent, like I hope that my kids would always feel comfortable coming and talking to me, but you know, I want there to be someone that they can talk to anonymously and them and their friends um, I mean, I hope that they would come and talk to me, but I'm glad that there's something like this available and it's something that I wholeheartedly support. And I've got a link to that in, um, I've got a link to that in the video description. The other organization that, uh, I'm, that my family is supporting this month is the House of Gigi, uh, the Griffin Gracie Educational Retreat and Historical Center. This is an organization that supports black trans women and they focus on leadership and building a community to support trans women of color um, in the South. And so it's another organization that I think is worthwhile. And I also have a link to it in the video description. So I think that, you know, it's, I definitely don't want to co-opt pride, you know, in that kind of way, but I want to celebrate and show my support for the community. I hope that that makes sense. So. Um, those are some great organizations and there's many other amazing organizations as well that you can support. Um, so I recommend that you check it out. Uh, okay. And what other announcements? Oh, well, before I do some other announcements, um, you wish you had some yarn so you can tie along. Well, you could also spin along. Um, and I mean, if you're going to knit or crochet or something, a rainbow project, uh, you know, I, I, feel free to share it with me as well. <laughs> but let me show off what I've pulled for today. So I don't know if we're going to get to all of them. And the top rainbow 
Uh, I'll go through the colors in a moment, but the top rainbow is, I guess, a selection that I pulled last year. I will probably pull out one of the greens, at least one of the greens, and pull out one of the purples. And whether or not I use the pink or red, that is also sort of a, a question overall. Um, but then on the um, second row, and wait, uh, yeah, then on the second row, uh, I have some fluorescent colors. Uh, those, except for the blue, frozen blue looks very neon blue to me, but uh, it doesn't actually fluoresce. Um, but there, yeah, so it's, you know, it's in there. So maybe we would leave it out to just play with the fluorescent colors. I don't know. There are options and I welcome input from all of you. And then along the bottom, I have a more muted type rainbow. Um, this includes Tangelo, which I would, you know, is more of a, it's definitely a red orange. And so I just, when I was pulling colors, I thought it would be fun to pull those as well. But again, which ones we use and that focus is going to, I guess, vary through, through the course of this um, video. I'm going to bring my head back up. Now, since we are going to use acid dyes today, and acid dye powder specifically, I will be wearing a respirator mask. Uh, safety glasses and gloves when I'm dealing with the powders and I will take it off when the the containers are closed and if I decide to aliquot some into some containers I've, I got lids for those to just make everything easier um, but yeah I have a combination of various techniques the goal was not as much for me this month to go with the exact pictures in here although I like the little bit of dust that's around those, I don't know if those are pastels, um, what kind of medium the, those, um, you know, but it's more about the, the rainbow palette and playing with different ways of a rainbow palette and hopefully to show the diversity of rainbow colorways that we can all create. Now, for yarn today, um, I'm primarily going to use Knit Pick Stroll. This is 75% Superwash Merino, 25% Nylon. I have many skeins prepared um, with these reusable nylon zip ties that I love to use. Um, and so, yeah, that's, that's the main yarn we're going to use today because I want to focus more on the colors uh, than the yarn today. Um, and, oh, I do have one more announcement. Uh, hold on. Um, okay. So I uh, have released something this morning. I'm going to drop the link into chat. Oh. All right, I have officially restocked pre-orders for the 2020 Summer Mini Skein Mini Series sets. Uh, if you guys are curious about what this is, starting on July 27th, um, I am going to release a mini series each evening of videos that feature mini skeins. This is a bonus series in addition to the regularly scheduled programming here on the channel. Um, now, each of these sets will feature five mini skeins, all dyed with the techniques from one video. The restock sets aren't actually filmed for the mini series, but I'm taking the techniques that I used in when I filmed those videos to dye some more yarn using those exact same techniques and protocols and dyes and color amounts uh, to create more sets. Um, and so, yeah, I'm, I'm midway through dyeing those for the restock, um, but uh, hopefully within the next, uh, the shipping time on them is three to four weeks, but I am aiming to get them out at the um, you know, as in early as July as possible, so that way you can get them by um, the time the series starts. Uh, these are all dyed with food coloring, and they come with uh, a handmade project bag, a zippered project bag, um, and a homemade stitch marker that I made. 
Um, and so it is a super, it's going to be a lot of fun. Um, these did, when I launched it, if you go back and watch the announcement video, they sold out really, really fast. So I'm not sure how long um, the samplers will be available. Um, oh, fantastic Mio. Thank you so much for the super chat. Thank you. And fantastic Mio says, love this channel. Thank you so much. Uh, yeah, so I, I dropped the, the sampler link in the chat. It's also in the video description. Uh, one other thing to note is that unlike um, the Hanukkah and last year's summer mini skin mini series, there is one wrapped package that corresponds to one of the nights, and which means that each of these, these sets is more cohesive in terms of color. And so it's designed so that way you could use them in one project. Um, but there are a couple mix up, mix up sets available that are gonna be more random, but everything will be dyed on one night and the sets are labeled with the date. So that way you can open it up as you watch the video uh, and things like that. Um, Oh, yay for dye, get dyeing yarn, hooray, hooray. All right, work. I'm going to get up and get started. Um, yeah, I am excited. I think that that's it. And so if you guys have any questions, um, I am happy, uh, I'm happy to answer questions about the set um, during this stream. I just restocked it this morning, so there should still be uh, a bunch available, but uh, I won't be able to answer any like Etsy messages during the live stream. Oh, and I'm gonna turn off my phone. Thank you so much for the order. Um, although I need to make sure that my ringtone is still on because I told my husband to call me if. Let's see. I'm going to turn off. No, I want ringtone on. And turn off notifications. Okay. All right. Let's stand up. Okay. So there are the colors. Um, but what I want to get going. Oh, let's see. Yes. So the, the people who ordered the um, sets from the launch, all of those have been shipped now. Uh, what are the dates the episodes are going to be released? Um, it is all in the video description, or sorry, in the listing description, but they start, uh, I think, July, Monday, July 27th, and then 28th, 29th, and 30th, I believe. Um, so, okay, and I want to swap. Haha, -ha, let's go over here, and I'm going to remove the image. All right, so, uh-oh, you dyed some yarn, but it got tangled. Um, if your yarn is tangled, wait for it to dry is the best advice that I can give. Okay, I need, uh, need measuring spoons. Okay, so far, you might notice that I have a pot sitting right here. The first thing I actually want to do is start kettle dyeing some yarn a pale gray um, or medium gray because I thought it'd be fun to revisit one of the techniques or some of these powder techniques but do it on a base that's gray. So in this pot I currently have 24 cups of water and Let's think, I've got a 2% stock solution of silver gray. And so if I add 15 milliliters, that would be 0.3 grams of dye. If I had one more tablespoon, this would be 0.6 grams of dye total. So 0.2 grams, 0.2 grams of dye per 100 grams because we're gonna add three skeins to this pot. And I did pre-soak the yarn. Sorry, I'm just squeezing out some excess liquid. 
Okay. We've got 300 grams of yarn that has been pre-soaked, and I am adding it in. And you can see we're just making a light gray base. There could still be some white patches. There's no acid in here yet, but I thought it would be fun to yeah, have something have something like this. And what I'm doing by adding the yarn to a cool vat with no acid yet, is this is gonna allow us, it'll still be tonal, but it's, allow, it's gonna allow us to get more even color coverage than what we would see if we um, had acid in there already. And so this is a technique that is really good for pastels. Um, and the reason why I'm doing this now, it's because then I'll go and I'll heat it, and then this will be available later on, should we want it. One, two, three tablespoons of white vinegar. And I'm going to stir this up. So with acid dyes, just like with food coloring, you need um, heat, you need time, and you need acid. And you also need a protein-based yarn. For this type of dye, you, it won't work on cotton. Um, and so if you vary the amount of acid and the amount of heat, that both of those can change the rate that the colors will absorb to your yarn. And so um, by manipulating that, that can change how, uh, how sharp the like tonal color differences are. So if I wanted this to be even more solid, I should have filled the pot up all the way if I could. And after I added the yarn, maybe let it sit for a couple hours before adding acid. But I don't mind there being some tonal nature in here. And I'm now gonna go start heating it up. I think one perk of my setup today is, nope, there's a little bit of too much water to put the steamer basket in. <laughs> but when I remove this yarn, then I will be able to use this pot as a steamer basket should we need that going forward. And I'm going to pop over and see questions. Um, when I, whenever I'm at like a waiting stage, I will come back and like face the front of the camera. Um, but if you have any questions in the meantime, um, please, like if, if I don't see it, please feel free to react. Um, let's see. Um, yay. Yeah, so the zip ties that I use are a great way to help prevent tangles, but also adding more butterfly ties is something that can be really helpful. Um, hello, hello, everyone. Um, oh, I, I'm so glad you like my videos. Okay. Let me get us set up so we can start going. And oh, all right, while I add water to this pan, let's go back to here. Would you like me to start? And I think, oh, I love the agenda. Okay, would you guys prefer that I start with a classic rainbow, a neon rainbow, or a muted rainbow. And so vote on informally, vote in chat, and I'll start setting up this pan. I don't know for sure if I'm going to be able to get to all three, but I want to have options. Uh, and as voting is going on, um, okay, I'm going to, in the pan, I have eight cups of water, two tablespoons of white vinegar. And I'm coming in um, just crudely until we decide the 300 grams 
of yarn. I'm only going to dye 200 grams in here. The third one will be a yarn mop. But since I pre-soaked it without any vinegar, this is going to allow on that third skein for me to have some vinegar in there. So that way, uh, and I'll explain what a yarn mop is in a moment, but that way it has acid in it. Okay. And while I'm waiting, I'm going to take some more of these skeins that I have prepped and start pre-soaking. I think I have 16, I don't think I'm going to die 16 skeins. I have 16 skeins prepped. But oh, there's so many things that I want to do with rainbows. Like I want to glit. I mean, and I just don't, I definitely don't have time to do all today. Maybe I'll have to do a mega time lapse video and just do a bunch of rainbow colorways. <laughs> that would be fun. Um, let's see. Um, the, okay, and I'll switch back to um, neon classic neon. Okay, I'm seeing a bunch of neon. Um, Okay, neon, yeah, I see a bunch of neon, so that is what we will start with. Um, but don't worry, I plan to do more. <laughs> okay, so I've got, I use these aluminum pans to hold yarn. And one of these skeins, it's going to be a yarn mop. So what do I mean when I say something is a yarn mop? It means that I'm, oh, and I'm not on the right screen. <laughs> um, there we go. Okay. Um, so I just took one of the skeins out of here and I rang, rang out the extra liquid. So when I say yarn mop, what is it that I mean? A yarn mop, for me, is a skein of yarn that is sort of an afterthought. So as I deal with dry powder and I add some here into our yarn, uh, what we have to think about is just that there's going to be dye in my gloves. And so what I will be doing with the yarn mop is coming over, wiping my gloves on it, um, and then rinsing off the gloves and drying it before I go into the next color. So this is a way to use up excess dye, but also the resulting colorways end up being some of my absolute favorites. Um, I also will use the phrase yarn mop to refer to a situation where, like if there's, if the color here in the pan isn't absorbing, I might call in a yarn mop, like so another skein of yarn to help soak up that, soak up the color. So that is another, option. All right, so the six colors I am planning on using right now are fluorescent fuchsia, fluorescent safety orange, fluorescent lemon, radioactive, frozen blue, and purple pop. Those are the six colors. Um, and as I mentioned, of these, really just the, the, the blue is not fluorescent. And of the green and the purple, there is those break because there's a blue pigment in there that isn't fluorescent <laughs> and it strikes faster. So that is just something to keep in mind. But I'm going to take our yarn. And this is a catering steam pan that I have across two burners. And you can see that we're in low-ish immersion. There's enough water to like have the access, and I think for this one, um, fluorescent colors are all a bit notorious for taking a long time to absorb. So I think that what we'll do is I might dye just more in classic type strips. Um, and then, yeah, I think that that is my plan. And then if I need to, I can set this pan aside and bring over my second pan. 
to do more colors. And or actually maybe the one I should the thing to set aside will be the um, pot where I'm doing that pastel gray, which I don't even know if we're gonna use. <laughs> but I just, you know, thought that, that would be fun. Um, you're a sucker for a good rainbow. Oh, you love my nails? Thank you. It's my first time trying a gradient. Um, and I only did it, my right hand now has a glove, but I only did it on one hand because I'm right-handed. Um, but I definitely want to try this again. Um, it's Ho Taco's new uh, linear hollow rainbow. Yeah. I, I'm a sucker for, uh, <laughs> for fun nail polish. And this is my first time trying true nail art. So, um, hello, hello, um, yeah, yeah, <laughs> oh, the nails look good on camera, um, all right, let's see, so now I'm going to be a lot more muffled because, and I'll show you guys, <sighs> It also means I might talk less. Uh-oh, uh that's not what I wanted to turn on. But so I'm now wearing my deluxe rubber respirator and safety glasses. I do have this linked in the video description, but last I checked, it was, sorry. Last I checked, it was sold out. So, uh, it will be harder to hear and understand me. So if people, ask questions about that in the comments, please uh, let them know that I'm wearing the respirator for safety. No. <sighs> All right, let's do this. Um, let's go. Oh, wait, I want my spoon. Uh, here we go. This is my special spoon because it's metal. I might have a couple others around, but I never seem to find them. <laughs> okay, we're going to start with purple pop. Oh, I don't think I haven't turned on the heat yet. I'm not ready too soon, everybody. I heard the stove. I'm going to come sit down and answer questions. Oh my gosh. Okay, let's take off the gloves. Oh my goodness. I absolutely could have just started right now with no um, heat, but that is not my goal. And actually, since we're playing with fluorescent colors, I'm upping the vinegar. So now we have five tablespoons of vinegar. Um, these, and especially uh, purple pop, will require being in the pan to cool completely to exhaust. So <laughs> that is worth keeping in mind, and it should only be a couple minutes before that gets hot. All right. <sighs> and I can see if there's any questions for each of you. Oh, now you can see my, my other hand. Uh, so. Um, yeah, I, um, I waffled between getting the whole rainbow set, but then when I thought about, oh, cause I thought about just getting, I guess like these four colors, um, because they're my favorites. But then when I thought like, no, I really want to try this and like, then, then I went and I, for the, for the set. <laughs> And, it, and I, yeah, <laughs> I didn't set an alarm this time either, but, um, okay. Oh my gosh, you guys are awesome. Thank you so much for, um, ordering, ordering the, the, the summer set. I'm really excited. I had a day the, the other day, <laughs> I had a day where I was just like making more project bags. Um, so I was able to order blanks. My limiting factor actually is, are, were stitch markers and uh, yarn. 
uh, 20 gram mini skeins are hard to come by right now because uh, yeah I think it's um, advent advent season um, shoot sorry cool um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my other hand. Oh man. Um, but uh, I'm like, I want to play. I, I've wanted to play with a neon rainbow for a long time, and I haven't. I've definitely played with like the the like pink through orange, mainly because those are more true. And you'll see when I start to like speckle on the powder, I'm not going for speckles because fluorescent colors are actually really hard to speckle because it takes a long time for the colors to absorb. So there's going to be a lot of spread. Um, so I sell the neon colors. Um, I don't sell any dye. Um, uh, Debbie, I'm, I guess I'm not sure about the, the question. Um, I have sold some like neon fluorescent colors in the past and I probably will sell these eventually. Um, um, how do you dye to make white color dye? Um, there is no white dye for yarn. So if you want white, um, you either need to like have some kind of resist. Um, so that way you can keep the bare white that is on your yarn or you can start with a bleached white yarn, but I don't know any indie dyers that bleach the yarn themselves to get a pure white. Uh, so that's something that I am not familiar with. Um, yes, because there is no fluorescent blue, but in my experience, frozen looks fairly neon. Um, any tips for dyeing wool alpaca blends? I actually have a video. Um, they, wool alpaca blends take more, even if it's superwash, you need more acid, more time with heat for the colors to absorb. Um, yeah, there's not a good fluorescent blue. Um, how do you get more saturated colors when you dye cotton? Um, use uh, commercial fiber reactive dyes. That's my best suggestion and soda ash. I'm not super experienced with that, but um, yeah, that's, that's what I recommend for cotton. Um, oh, where did I get? All the colors I'm using today are from Dharma Trading Company. And they're Dharma acid dyes. And I am now going to come on up and kit myself back up because we are nice and steamy. And I'm actually gonna reduce the heat to low because while I want this hot, if when you're dealing with powders, if it's too steamy, then it's gonna make your gloves damp. And what you want to avoid is getting liquid inside the dye containers because if you do that then um, it can clump up and it can make the dyes go bad faster so there's a chance when we do this that we could lose the yellow but there's a risk because if you add a little bit of orange like yellow can turn orange or green like that and I masked up. Okay. And I'll pop back in every once in a while to show you guys the yarn mop. But now I've got the purple top. And this color, with all fluorescence, a little goes a long way. So I don't want to do two too much. If you do too much, it's a notorious color for uh, bleeding. <laughs> uh, and I'm not sure how well you guys might be able to see, but from what I did, we see pink here. And there are some speckles on here because the blue that is in here is going to strike super quickly. Um, shoot, you know, I don't know if I'm going to be flipping yarn to the other side. We'll have to see how things go. 
Okay, but that is our purple prop. Rinsing off my speckled glove. And I want to dry it because if it's a damp, when you go into the container, then that is not going to be helpful. <laughs> and, you know, pop in that's the yarn box. And I have to make sure I can see. Yeah, I'm not sure if the speckles are coming through on camera. Um, but in contrast, I'm kind of like a fluorescent sea shell. So I think purple pop is probably fluorescent fuchsia with a little bit of blue in it, is my hypothesis. Time. 
I'm not really reading. So there's a bit more, a bit more golden when concentrated. So you can see how bright that halo is. And if I move the yarn, some of this brightness in yellow does move through. But I'm not worried about the yellow spreading too far up and down because well, we want some of that yellow to stick around. This is pretty. I haven't done, I don't think the colors look super neon on camera, but this looks like a highlighter yellow and the edges there look very highlighter-esque as well. <laughs> All right. Radioactive. Radioactive definitely feels very much like an acid type green color. And I don't know how well you can see, but it definitely speckles as well. Because I think of that blue component. And so if you look at the, I guess, the thing that you can see through the movement, it is not, it has a different quality. Whoops. To it than the yellow, but it definitely is like a yellowish feel. Like what you see down here from where it breaks is <laughs> reminiscent of that, if that makes sense. And I'll come and look at questions in a moment. And I'll take a picture of this in a moment as well. All right, now I'm coming in. With some fluorescent safety orange. Which is a beautiful, beautiful color. Oh, I cannot wait for you guys to see what is happening with the mop. Um, it is beautiful. And all right, I'm less worried about losing the yellow now, as long as I don't splash too much orange onto it. This is really pretty, you guys. But I'm really trying to move the colors through. I might need to do the other side off camera. It all depends on how quickly our pinks stretch. See, the blue is basically done. And actually, maybe because I didn't use too much, they might strike faster than I can turn it out. Okay. But now to show you, this is the yarn mop. How stunning is that? <laughs> Random, rainbow, gorgeous. Very different feeling from this more variegated color line. Oh, all the powders are closed. I am taking off my mask and let's set a timer for 15 minutes. This is beautiful. Okay, I'm gonna take a picture of this and share it to my Instagram stories. So that way you guys can see it in its glory. Oops. I don't need a picture of me and my ceiling. 
Uh, oh. Come on, Rebecca. So with this amount of acid, I think that um, the other colors I've picked probably would strike about a lot faster. Um, let's see. I don't think it shows up even on camera as neon, um, but uh, stories. Okay, now it should be in my Instagram stories and I'm gonna wash my hands. And I'm going to increase the heat up a bit more. Um, and while I'm at it, yeah, I always like to just wipe down the floor as a little check. And the check was good. Just that my floor needs mopping. up the heat and I'm going to come and chat and try to scroll back through the chat to see if there's any questions that I missed. Um, oh, where's my cute little rainbow flower? Boop. Okay. <laughs> um, let's see. This is Knit Picks yarn. The yarn that I'm using today is Knit Picks Stroll. Um, and I'll drop an affiliate link into the chat. I do have um, lots of links and other things in the video description for things that I use commonly in my videos. And so those are uh, affiliate links, which means I do earn commission if you make purchases through those links, just like the um, link I put for nitpicks in the chat. So the yarn is 75% superwash merino, 25% nylon. Um, hello everyone. Um, yes, I think I'm going to need to flip it, um, because of the blue and the green a little bit, but we will see if we'll just decide to move it over. Um, so that way we can dye more color ways. Um, so we will see. Um, yes. And our inspiration photo for today is rainbows <laughs> and I am all I mean, my, my dress is just black, but otherwise I'm decked out. <laughs> um, oh, I'm glad you guys don't like the colors. Yeah, so we're starting with neon. Um, uh, but yeah, the, the dyes I'm using are Dharma Trading Company um, acid dyes. Uh, Jacquard and other brands also contain fluorescent dyes. Um, so it's worth just checking the, the brand. I forget which greens, like for example, are fluorescent um, from uh, from Jacquard. Now, if I was going to pick just a neon colorway, I might not necessarily pick the fluorescent colors. Certainly the pink and the orange and the yellow, yes. Um, for green, there are some other really bright greens that sort of feel very neon, but they're not fluorescent. So that's sort of just why I went for this one. Um, oh man, I don't even know what auto subtitles are doing when I'm wearing a mask. Um, aw, hearts for rainbow babies. Um, I, I I told this story last year, so I think um, I think I didn't know what a rainbow baby like that phrasing um, back when I was pregnant with Ryder, but for for me personally, so I, I guess I can't call him a rainbow baby specifically, but for me the rainbow was that um, I had a tumor um, removed and it was benign, but I had like a, a lumpectomy and I have a nice, actually you can't really see it, so I have a nice little scar right here. Um, and then I found out that, you know, when I found out it was benign, I then found out I was pregnant with Ryder like two days later. And so it was, made the pregnancy especially emotional because like if, 
we, we were moving and we decided to rush the biopsy and the surgery and they moved, like the surgeon moved mountains to fit me in on the schedule since we were about to move and we didn't know with like Cobra if I could have surgery in Massachusetts. But if I, you know, I had a pregnancy test before the surgery, which was negative, but if we had known I was pregnant, then we might have had to delay the surgery and it would have, it would have been a really hard, it would have been a really hard thing. And so emotionally, that was a very um, difficult thing, but I'm very thankful that like, you know, I had, I, I had an awesome medical team that helped me. And so we, you know, it's, yeah, so it's, you know, I then, you know, started making lots of rainbow things for, for a writer because like that, but you know, that hope after the storm, that thing, that was very, very meaningful. Um, and thank you. Oh yeah. I, so I made this little hair bow. I made it out of tool and there's a tutorial somewhere, not mine. I don't know if I ever posted this on my blog, but there's a tutorial somewhere about how to make little tool flowers. Um, I think that it was squares and you fold them and then you sort of stitch along. Um, there's a way to like stitch and gather them. And then I just hot glued it to a dollar store headband <laughs> and put a rhinestone in the middle. Um, so yeah, but, uh, anyway, uh, oh dear. Oh dear. <laughs> oh, cause I don't have my, the right thing selected. There we go. You can see more of the yarn, um, which is, oh, it is delicious. Um, it is delicious. And oh, I was like, I was like, was that email important from the like head of my youngest school? And no, it was not important. Um, but anyway, I know I have a timer set, but I'm like itching to go and check. Um, so from here, the blue doesn't look patchy, but I know that beneath the surface, it's going to be a bit patchy. Um, so I am excited. I think with, with the neons, I didn't want to do this. I think with the other rainbow, I'm going to do more random color placement in the immersion pan. But with this one, since I know some of these flowers and colors spread a lot, I wanted to do it more reg in a regular way. So that way they didn't overtake each other. Um, so thank you. Um, oh man. But yeah, the, um, boys are all upstairs at the moment. Um, and so I told them to call me if they needed to come down because of, um, yeah, because of the guy powder. Um, and Ooh. Oh man. Uh, what else has been going on? Um, yeah, I just, oh, I'm so excited. I love dyeing rainbows. I want to try, I've never actually tried doing the unicorn farts tutorial colorway, which involves using guar gum, I think, to use food coloring or acid dyes. I don't remember. Um, but it involves using guar gum and making like a tiny little rainbow section. And then the rest is all either white or black or gray or another color. And so then when you knit it up, you sort of get these just like tiny rainbow patches as you go around. And that's something that I want to do at some point. Um, yeah. So, well, well, since I'm doing dye powder, that's why I have them kept away. I haven't played with my powders as much, um, since the quarantine began, just because it's harder with everyone around, but, um, we have it planned so that way I don't have to deconstruct the kitchen. Uh, we have lunches all ready to go so that way we can get them out and, um, we're going to see if I can have some long days on Wednesdays moving forward. Um, have I ever dyed with chalks? No. And I've tried looking up to see what's in, for example, Crayola chalk. And uh, I'm not sure. Certainly it's water soluble in the sense because chalk can dissolve a bit and it can, um, like it rinses off of sidewalks. My, uh, But I don't know what kind of pigment it is and the pigment yeah so i i don't know and i think that it could be a pain to rinse all the chalk out to be honest so i haven't tried it um that doesn't mean you shouldn't try it that's just the reason why i it's not 
high up on my list, even though it is on my list. Um, <laughs> yes. Oh man, I should just have like a live feed always set up on the stove so that way I can check in on it on other rooms. Um, that'd be fun. Dharma only ships in to the US. Um, I'm not sure, honestly, about that. I don't have, my relationship with the company is just as a customer, so I've never reached out to ask um, them about that. But there could be restrictions with dyes being shipped internationally, I don't know. Um, um, you remember last year I did the rainbow soft link with the sprays. Am I gonna do something like that again this month? Um, not specifically. Eventually I would love to do um, like a spray with acid dyes using convert my misto and then do something like that. That is also something on my list. But when I try that, I might not start with a rainbow because I'd have to like clean out the bottle in between each color. Um, but that is sort of like yeah, the, my list is really long, which is a good thing. Um, but then sometimes things I'm really excited about then don't get made for like for months. Um, well, thank you so much. Um, you always would like to film your dying too, but you're always afraid to. Well, I mean, if people are interested at some point, I can talk more about my setup. So right now, um, I am, my face is just on my laptop integrated camera. And then I have two other cameras set up in my kitchen. Um, and they're both uh, Logitech. Uh, I think C930E cameras, um, which are fine. And then I use OBS um, for streaming. Um, but I normally film most of my videos on the um, a Canon EOS 80D um, DSLR camera. And I do have a mic pack, I'm afraid. To, I'm afraid of having myself wired to the computer. I don't know how it works and I'm planning to get a new computer sometime soon. So that way maybe it's something that could handle more inputs than what I'm currently doing. So then I can improve audio from all videos. So that is um, hopeful. The kids are watching me, they always wanna help you when you get the air not to die. Hey, dying with kids is really, really fun. Um, do I? Do I ever apply dye using dye stocks? Um, yes, I do. And oh goodness, to get even color. Um, personally, even color isn't always my goal. Um, and I say that because I think part of what I like about the hand dye thing is that you get different tones and shifts, if that makes sense. Um, but for more even color, I recommend actually diluting your dye stock a lot because the, the final color that you get depends on the total volume or the total amount of dye that you add. And the volume of water and liquid that you're using to apply that dye can shift the, um, like how even it is. So if, you know, if I add like 15 milliliters of a 1% stock solution, I'm going to end up with a fairly concentrated color on a small patch of yarn. If I take that same amount of dye and dissolve it in a liter of water and pour that on, I'm gonna get something that's much more pastel and um, more even and spread out. Um, so if you start cool with no acid, you can help the color spread more, if that helps. Um, oh, fiber by nature, you're nine? Wow. Um, Uh, all right, I'm gonna get up and check on, da, 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 this is me, nope, there we go. Um, you're, so you're gonna begin your dying journey tomorrow. Yay, have so much fun, Victoria. Oh, I love doing these lives. Okay, let's, oh hey, my internal clock is really good, guys. Um, there's 15 seconds left. I have to say it's a huge pain to try to stop my timers. Um, okay, there's still pink. The orange is basically cleared. There is still yellow. The blue has cleared and that has cleared a lot. So 
I've got a few choices here when it comes to flipping. And I'm debating a lot. But I think I might try to do something like this. Because I want to be able to move on and Actually, flipping this way is working better than I thought. Normally, when I try to flip yarn, I will just flip like completely over, but my rack, oh, I just got myself. My rationale for this is I don't want like that pink to spread all the way down. So we'll see. This is definitely not as clean as flipping the other way, but hey, at least I didn't mix things up very much. Okay. Um, I am going to try to rearrange this. So the places where I need the most, I guess, re-coverage are a hint in the purple pop. The blue needs some. The green needs some. The yellow just needs like a hint. The orange actually needs a little more than I thought. And then the pink. And so I'm doing my best to arrange this there. And one other thing at the moment I'm going to turn that off and get a can. So I don't know if and how or when we're going to use this. But the grays that we made. Oh, what is snagged? Here we go. Those pastel grays that we made at the beginning that we might use later on, those are done and ready. So I am removing these from the pot. Um, and setting them aside. Ooh, hot. Okay, I am going to, oh, okay, I need to think. Okay, that is sitting there. I need to um, remove some of the liquid from this pot. going to add my steamer basket to it and start start steam setting this yarn mop. Since we're going to add more color, I think I'm going to what I'm going to do is make a second mop, but um, I don't want to add more color to that one. So that is why I'm doing this this way. Um, and I probably want it to steam for like 20 to 30 minutes. Okay, I need to make a new yarn mop. Um, do, do, do. I'm just going to get not one of the other skeins that I've been pre soaking. So I want to make sure that the one I'm going to use as a yarn mop has been. Ooh, wait, no, I have a new idea. I have a new idea. I'm going to use one of my gray skeins as a yarn mop. I'm going to use one of these. And 
So because it's hot, this is also going to make things interesting. Um, but uh, yeah, it has acid in it. So didn't, don't agitate too much. Um, yeah. Uh, Yeah, dyeing yarn sounds more complicated than I think that it is. And so that is something that has been really good for me as well to learn. Um, so if you go back to like when I first started with acid dyes, I was terrified. Terrified. Okay. Um, it is so humid. Okay, I am going to start with uh, start with the purple again. I don't want need very much. Just a bit of some color. So I'll say the yarn mop is warm, but not too hot to touch. So, okay. I wish, I wish the light on my thing wasn't broken. Okay, gonna dry off my hands. And to show, this is what, um, I've got going on with the yarn mop so far. So I don't even need, I don't really need pink um, or the floral pastiche, but I want the other one I'm going to add a tiny bit more is in part for the yarn mop. Because I want to have some of that pink color on that yarn. Now this type of yarn mop that I've got going on is something that in theory I can do intentionally. And in fact, I've definitely tried to do that intentionally in the past. It's not uh, perfect. It definitely helps for me to be doing these mops uh, without as much thought. Oh, let me reduce the heat on the steamer basket. Okay. Mm -hmm. Cool. Um, I'm really, really liking the combination of the fluorescent colors on the gray. I think that that is so cool. Okay, I need to move on. But with this yarn knot kind of thing, no two will ever be the same. So that is something else that is fun. Um, oh, I didn't move. Huh. So there might be more pastel areas and less pastel areas. We're just doing our best. Um, a place where I am not being as light is with the frozen blue. Because as I said, this color, while it is beautiful and bright, um, I've done some more deep patches of it because I don't want it to help me get a little more purple on that purple pop, but also I want, if you add a little bit more dye, then that can help to penetrate a little further into the yarn. Okay. 
over there, and yellow. Barely need any. Um, Yeah, the yellow is one when you go too far, it doesn't necessarily feel as neon anymore. But oh, I'm so glad that this this little flip worked. <laughs> But yeah, the, both the purple pop and the radioactive absolutely speckle more because I think they've got that blue pigment in there. But this is good. There could still be some white patches in there, but I'm going to call it. And as for our gray yarn mop, this is gorgeous. This is absolutely gorgeous. Um, and I am putting this directly in the steamer basket. Um, trying not to have it touch the other one, but it's the same color that's going on, so that's not a problem. And now I'll set a timer. There's just not as much time as, you know, I would ideally want. I am going to, once, once the steamer basket is done, I'm going to move that pot off the stove so then I can move the fluorescent neon colors over so then we can do another immersion colorway. That is my plan. Um, I am going to put away these neon colors, but for one more time, if you guys are curious, this batch used frozen blue, fluorescent fuchsia, radioactive, purple pop, fluorescent lemon, and fluorescent safety orange. And I created this colorway using some powder. And one reason why I prefer to just go straight from the powders versus making a dye sock is that um, you can have some control where you spread it because if you add the powder, 
then if you know how fast or slow the colors might strike, you can get it to spread out, um, which is cool. But then also, um, you can get speckles and stuff, which is fun. Um, it's a lot harder with 1% stop solutions. If I started adding it, you might see more lines of the color, which can be good. It just depends on what you're going for. I really like that. I have not done a rainbow with these specific colors before. Um, although I will admit, I think those yarn mops are my favorite. <laughs> All right, I'm now gonna check the chat to see if there's any questions. If you asked a question earlier and I missed it, please feel free to um, come in and ask her. Actually, you know what? I'm Before I go to questions, I think I'm gonna take a brief break, um, a brief commercial break. Um, so I will pop in an ad. You may or may not see it, but I'm going to go drink some water. Then I'll come back and answer questions. Uh, and you may or may not see an ad. YouTube algorithm uh, decides. And this is an example of the delay from when I see my face go away and then I'll answer you. <laughs> All right, yeah, it's a bit of a delay. The ad is inserted, and I'm going to turn off the off. Audio is back on. Hello, oh, I'm back. All right. So one other thing that's worth pointing out is the reason why I'm only having 200 grams of yarn in this pan is that it makes it easier to apply and spread colors. Uh, some people can do 400 grams in a pan at a time. I don't think I've ever tried that. And I struggle getting the color to go all the way through in the way that I want. Uh, hey, honey, what's up? You want to get the what? Markers. Oh, yeah, you can go. I would carefully go, yeah, that way. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's fine. Uh, what was I saying? Um, yeah, so I, I personally find three is the most that I can deal with regularly, but for this kind of powder technique, maybe I'll do three for the next one because there's going to be some more randomness going on with where I'm placing the colors. Um, Uh-oh, what happened? Oh, phew, it just moved. I was like, I lost the screen. Um, but yeah, with 200, I know that like, I don't know, even 100, I love just having 100 grams spread out in there. It's the more you can get the yarn to spread, the easier it is to apply color evenly. Um, I think the audio should be back now. Oh, phew, it just moved. I was like, I lost. Yeah, I turned off the audio um, a tiny bit ago when I was taking my break. So I just turned off the audio completely during that break, but it should be working again. Um, so, all right, so that's a note on the yarn. Uh, da, 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 da. I'm scrolling back up. Um, so, love, and I might, I might miss some. Yes, so I sound muffled, and yes, my voice is muffled when I'm dealing with the acid eye powder because I'm wearing 
because I'm wearing a respirator mask. Um, in order for dealing with powders, um, the you know, they are safe to use in your home, but you want to make sure you're working in a well ventilated area away from kids. Uh, when you're dealing with the powders that you clean up everything thoroughly. Some people only like to use powders outside. Some people don't want to use them at all in their home. People have different levels of comfort with that. Um, but you do want to make sure you're wearing a respirator mask so you aren't inhaling the particles. Um, you never want to inhale any type of particle. So just like if you're doing woodwork, you should wear a mask if you're doing a lot of sanding as well. So it's a similar type of thing. Uh, and yeah, I occasionally, I don't always, like with Kool-Aid powder, I don't feel a need to always wear a mask. Um, I occasionally do because I have one but I'm comfortable not wearing a mask with Kool-Aid because uh, you know, you don't need, they don't say you don't need a mask to like make a picture of Kool-Aid. But if I'm dealing with a ton of powder in a day, then yeah, I like to have some kind of barrier so I'm not inhaling anything. Um, but uh, yeah, I'm definitely comfortable using like food-based powders without a mask, but uh, yeah, with, with ask commercial dyes, absolutely wear a mask um you know wear something like i i've used n95s and then i use this deluxe rubber respirator that has a really tight seal and i can replace the cartridges on either side and it's always comforting for me to like wipe down the like non cartridge part of the mask and see that there's no dye on it but um so that makes me feel better but you still don't know yeah it, it's good um But yeah, if, you're, if your lungs are bad, then wearing masks are good. Um, or maybe instead of doing techniques like this, make stocks, because then you can wear um, masks for more limited times. Fiber mop. The first thing you made from something you dyed was some superwash fiber used as a yarn mop. Yay! Um, yeah, the I love just ran like, the, the colorways I get, and I know that like I can dip my hands in a container and wipe them on yarn to get similar effects, but something about the placement just being completely random based on like, the colors that I'm using is it's both freeing as a technique and whenever I think about placement, I it's hard to be as random. Whereas this, I'm like, okay, where's a clear spot on the skein? Um, because my focus is on what's on the stove. And so that's really fun. Um, Uh, <laughs> I'm waiting for your acid dyes to come. Yay! Um, your mops are always a surprise. Yeah. Um, yes. So that that's the other thing. When when with the mop, when I'm satisfied with the color, um, just like Mary Ruth said, I will swap and add another one. So sometimes I might keep going and letting that color build up. But if I'm happy with the coverage, and I you mean, know, I was loving those neon pops over it, which we might lose the white in the washing, it might bleed. That is an absolute possibility. Um, but uh, yeah, it, so that's, it's always just worth keeping that in mind. And if you're satisfied with the color on it, then grab another. Um, and of course, um, instead of using yarn, you could use like a silk scarf. Um, Acid dyes don't work on cotton, otherwise I'd say like a cotton hanky, but you know, um, and you don't, you could reuse the same mop over multiple projects and just layer and layer and layer until you get something that's like very gothic and a little muddy because of all the layers on and saturated. So there's so much that you could do. Um, oh gosh, spilling dye is something I'm terrified. Uh. Oh, you love when I, when I die, I always say, uh-oh, um, you always say we made or we did instead of I made, it makes us feel more included. Um, yeah, I think that that probably comes from, um, like, probably th that instinct comes from writing, like, scientific papers and stuff, because you never say I when you are writing a paper, even if you did all the work, all the experiments yourself, it's always we. I mean, there's normally multiple authors on a scientific paper and frequently um, 
you know, you get to be an author from like intellectual contribution, experimental contribution, and writing contribution. Um, and so there's many different like aspects of support and everything going into a project. But yeah, even I think even someone writing like a solar solo author paper uh, for a journal wouldn't would say we instead of I. Um, so I think that that comes from that. <laughs> um, what's with this we business? So yeah, so I think that that's where the we, but also, yeah, I do legitimately feel like that there is a collaboration in this. So even though I'm the one filming, I'm the one dying it here, you guys ask questions and the questions that you ask inspire projects and colorways and ideas. And so I absolutely, when you guys leave comments on videos, and I guess this is when I can be like, subscribe, turn on notifications. Um, but it, when you leave comments, I keep track of all these questions and suggestions and requests. And again, the list is long, so it might take me a while to get to everything. But I do at times when like, I'm like, okay, Oh, what, what exactly do I want to do? Then I go through and I'm like, oh, right. I wanted to try X, Y, Z. And so, um, yeah, I keep track of it all. Um, sometimes viewers for live streams inspire you to die more. Absolutely. Um, is there a type of glimmer dye or does the yarn that has the effect? For shimmer and glimmer, you need that to be in the yarn. Um, unfortunately, there is not... Uh, like a dye that will make the yarn metallic or sparkly. Um, usually you will find um, something with Stellina or Lurex in it. Um, those are two, or occasionally like Angelina, those are some shimmery type fibers that are usually spun already into yarn. Um, Aw. Um, okay, so another, so you did 800 grams in a pan yesterday? <whistles> yes, so if you want, if you don't want the colors to go in all the way, then yeah, crowd the pan. That's a great way to add resist. Um, and so you learn something about YouTube. If you don't watch ads, you don't make any money, even though it's not much, you still lose that income. So I like to support by purchasing or super chats. Yes, uh, <laughs> thank you, Carol. There are many, many ways that you guys can support the channel and honestly whether or not you watch watch the ads um you by watching the videos and liking and subscribing those things help youtube share the videos with more people which then like in turn like helps so ad revenue is the way i get paid from youtube so by viewing the ads that's where the income from youtube comes from they revenue share with the content creators in a way that, you know, is, is in my opinion, fair because they are creating the platform and I don't have to pay or any fees to use this or share my videos. And so, um, that is awesome. Uh, I also make money, um, and fund all of this through my Etsy shop. Like, oh, I guess now's the time. I'm still going through questions, but, um, uh oh. I need to get the link. Like the Somerset pre-order that is available now. Um, and just drop that in the chat again. Uh, you know, I make money through selling the yarn I dye in these videos on Etsy. Uh, I also have a Patreon. Um, there's a link in the video description. And I do affiliate marketing. Um, but, and so I link to the items that I'm using in my videos anyway. And so then if you purchase through one of my like Amazon, nitpicks, their supplier affiliate links, um, then I get a commission from whatever you purchase. And so that's sort of a really like interesting dynamic. But super chats, uh, the, there's a little dollar sign at the bottom of the screen that is another way um, that you can contribute directly, but you don't have to. I, I mean, as I said, the biggest, the biggest way that you support everything here is by engaging in the videos. Um, and so, cause that also helps like opportunities come up and stuff like me being feature featured in the main net crate. And so that was, um, awesome. Um, no worries. I'll be checking on the yarn in a moment, but I want to get through as many questions. Um, I saw, oh no, I lost. Um, um, I hope you 
can do another roving dying video or spinning video soon. Uh, I mean, I still have some spinning videos that I haven't edited. I have an editing backlog at the moment and oh man, I, I'm almost, I can't exactly afford it, but I'm almost at the point where I'm about going to try to explore seeing edit, like if, uh, looking for editors. Like I'm almost, I'm almost there because then I could focus more on the, my favorite part, which is the dying part. Um, but yeah, there's actually a roving video coming out on Friday and another roving video, which I don't have placed yet, but that should be coming out like in early July, I believe. Um, yeah, all the fiber I've been using today is the same, but yay, welcome to your first live. So you have YouTube premium. Yes. So, um, content creators do get a share of, if you have YouTube premium or was it used to be YouTube? So there's an ad free version of YouTube that you, the viewers can pay for, and they do give like some revenue from those views to the content creators. Um, so yeah, so channels still get paid. Um, I have, I'm not sure about like the breakdown, but yeah. Um, so yeah. And so don't ever feel guilty if like you skip over an ad, like that is legit and fair and it's YouTube's job to like, if they're going to show an ad that interests you, that's, that's their job. Um, so don't feel bad about skipping. I like, you know, that's not a problem. Um, so you did the Kool-Aid dying from Nick Crate. Yay. You did half in pink, half in purple. You called it unicorn vomit. That's amazing. Um, do I ever dye raw fleece? No, I've never started from raw fleece and I've never really scoured my fiber. There are definitely times, especially with some cotton, that scouring the fiber before dyeing probably would help with the dye absorption. Uh, so that is something that I need to, or that I plan to experiment and try to do more. But in general, I don't. Um, around your yellow and orange, it is sort of brown. Uh, Julia, I guess I don't know what you were dying. Um, how do I avoid that? Uh, yeah, without knowing more about the project, it's hard to know about the brown, but some colors do break brown. Um, so I heard, <laughs> uh, so fantastic Neo, I don't know about that. I just know that like in general, we, or, and actually in scientific writing, you avoid you do a lot more things in passive voice, um, even though passive voice isn't great, but you usually are trying to like remove, you don't, you're trying to remove as much of yourself from the writing as possible. Um, so, uh, so for example, instead of saying like, we, um, like we measured out 50 microliter aliquots, like, like the 50, we, we would say like 50 milliliter aliquots were added to each tube or whatever. Um, okay, that orange is good. The pink is pretty good. This is actually pretty good. Um, I don't want to remove it. I'm turning off heat here. I'm not going to add more color. I'm going to consider this done. I am also going to consider these yarn knots done. Where are my tongs? Um, just to show, although I'm probably going to leave it in the pot, but here's one of the mops. And here is our other mop. And the gr on the grayish face, I did start off by dyeing a pastel gray color. Um, I am going to turn, I turned that heat off. Has that heat been off the whole time? Uh-oh. Okay, well the yarn is hot. <laughs> I know, I can't remember. No, no, because I put the one yarn in first. Okay. Um, oh good, these edges are not hot. So I'm gonna move that neon rainbow over. Thank you. 
and bring out the man. Um, where am I going to put you? You can go over here, and you can go up here for now. Uh, I'm going to wash my hands. I'm just thinking about where we're going next. Um, oh, ha! And, oh, there might be a few more questions, but I'm going to get the yarn set up. Uh, let's do eight cups. do just I think two tablespoons of vinegar. Don't forget there was a lot more vinegar in our neon pan. Okay and once again I think what I want to do is I'm going to do a different type of colorway and we're going to use different rainbow colors but I'm adding 300 grams of yarn in here so it can get acid. I'm then removing 100 grams to be a mop which I will steam later I suppose. Um, I'm going to re figure this. So I don't know, a, a lot of indie dyers get their yarn from the same places. A lot of people order from, I'd say wool to dye for is a big source from people. I tend to order more from, mostly from Knit Picks because they're a retail company and I think that it's easiest for people starting out to order from there. Um, but then I also order from Dyer Supplier and Wool to Dye for as well. Um, what was I going to say? But, uh, yeah, so I don't know. I think potentially if you have like a longer skein than stroll and so it's, everything is thinner, even if it's bunched up, it might be easier to get good color coverage. But I don't know. I, I, I haven't watched many dyeing tutorials myself. <laughs> I've read some blog posts for when I'm like setting up natural dyes, but otherwise like I typically, um, I typically stay, oh, like I just sort of go for it. Okay, I am going to pre-soak some more, just in case. Okay. I find stroll absorbs water really quickly, so a long pre-soak isn't super necessary. But a long pre-soak is essential if you want. Um, a long pre-soak is essential if you want um, even color coverage. So, okay, I'm gonna come back and look through more questions. Um, um, oh no, and I might lose some things um, because I hadn't even gotten to where I put the link in. But I think I saw a question about Mio. Um, uh, have you ever used Mio or Kool-Aid Drops, Crystal Light? Um, I have used Mio. Um, it was a very early episode of Dye Pop Weekly, um, I think within the first 10. And it works well. <laughs> It's just the, the smell is very pungent because it's so concentrated. Um, so yes, I have a Mio tutorial. Um, thanks. Uh, am I live? Yes, I am currently live. Um, 
Ah, uh, oh, your video. Yeah, no, I mean, I have, I have, the, 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 the question with like hiring an editor is like, I feel like it wouldn't necessarily, because of the way that I like sort of edit as I film and have like a thing in my head, I don't like, I don't know how much time, like, I, it's always like hard to know how much time I, it, it could save and stuff. So that's something that I've, um, yeah, I always think about, oh gosh, my, my photo editing backlog is ridiculous. Um, just got here. So I'm using acid dyes today. I'm using Dharma acid dyes. Um, Yeah, no, I think that the, the issue for me and the reason why I couldn't just list things completely unedited is that um, uh, the, main, the main thing is that because there's so much like waiting in between that, um, I mean, I do very minor editing, um, but there are sometimes things I have to cut out like the dog bucking and things like that. Um, oh, I think... Um, I'm, I'm all set with, with roving at the moment. And I honestly don't have plans to try going from a raw fleece because it, that might be <laughs> the level where I stop, <laughs> given that washing is my least favorite part. Someday, someday. I, um, so yeah, I, I have, I've done a few spinning videos. Um, and I, I have a few, but there, it's more of just like, the, yeah, it's it's less of like a how to spin. I think, although I don't even know if that's one of the ones still in the queue. I might have like a chain plying video. Um, there's maybe a, every once in a while I'll put out a spinning video. I enjoy filming them, but um, yeah, they tend to just be like keep being bumped for other dying videos when it comes to editing. Um, Um, why do I prefer vinegar over citric acid? Uh, that's because I started with vinegar. Um, and it's really as simple as that. I like citric acid. I just don't have as good of a handle for it. And it's really easy to just splash in some more vinegar. Uh, but I know people who are sensitive to scents might prefer citric acid. Um, yeah, and no one has complained about the vinegar smell. Um, uh, ship yarn. What, what base did Knit Hicks continue that you really liked? Cause I might, I might, uh, depending on the base, I might have a good, uh, dupe or maybe not. Um, yes. Um, yes. Yeah, so the, the yarn is currently sitting just to heat up before I start dyeing. Um, And yes, oh, and since we're talking about Knit Picks, I'm using Knit Picks Stroll. I just dropped my affiliate link into the chat. Um, and checking. Uh -huh. Thank you, guys. Uh, thank you guys for ordering the pre-order set. Um, the super silk. Ah, are they out of it now? I think, um, I have a little bit of it as, yeah, I think, so super silk might have been in one of the lines. So this is something that was interesting. A long time ago, Knit Picks released like, I forget if it was 20 or 12 new bear yarn lines. And I think I started off ordering eight because there were a lot that were fairly pricey. And I think super silk was one of the ones that was more expensive. Um, and it's beautiful and unique. And so I don't have a good dupe off the top of my head for that. Um, but what I noticed that was interesting is it that, and I don't know if it's because, like, it's certainly not because of me. I'm a drop in the bucket as far as they're concerned. But it was interesting to see that the ones that they started discounting a lot more and then I bought later were the ones that I didn't buy at first because of the, like, price. 
Um, and so that was that was interesting. Um, yeah, so Stroll is the, um, that I just popped in, that is the name of the yarn line that I'm using. It is the 7525 Superwash Merino Nylon from Knit Picks. Um, and okay, I'm gonna make my face go away and we will dye some more. Ha 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 ha. Thank you guys all for joining today. Make sure you're subscribed. Subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. And summer, I'm gonna drop this in, but the summer sets are pre-orders are restocked. Um, so that awesome uh, summer set with the little hollow yarn sun bag and markers and everything, um, they are back in stock. Okay, we're hot. Yarn mop is ready. And so because this is a question sometimes, a yarn mop is a, um, I can just set it there. It's just a skein of yarn that I'm going to use to wipe my gloved hands off as we go. So I think I want to go for a classic rainbow using my classic rainbow colors. And I'm realizing I want to flip the camera. Okay, so the colors I'm going to use right now are electric violet, sapphire blue, emerald green, Brilliant yellow, saffron spice, and cherry bomb, which is my favorite, my favorite red. Um, some other colors that I considered is sometimes I like deep magenta. I was like a pink in there, but yeah, I thought we'll, we'll play with this. And the plan is to go a little more random. Um, so not to have like a repeating rainbow variegated colorway like the one that we just dyed. <sighs> Ooh. I've never dyed silk roving. I do have a silk video that's going to be coming out soon. Um, hopefully by early next week that will be available for patrons and then it'll come out in, uh, I guess in July, it'll be available publicly. All right, guys, I'm about to mask up. So if people come in and say I'm muffled, please let them know why. Um, And you always want to make sure your mask has a good seal. You can tell the seal is good if you cover where the cartridges are and breathe in and you feel the like suction versus feeling air come in from around the edges. All right, let's start. Put the heat on low. This is the cherry bomb. I can decide if I want to just speckle. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to speckle some colors on, but then I am going to come through and wiggle it, but I'm going to just wait a little bit. And that time like that we wait um, is going to allow there to be some speckles, but we'll also get some spread. But I'm not worrying, and I am drying my hands in between each color. I'm not going to worry about uh, going in like a specific rainbow order. Um, we conceivably will go into each color pot more than once. And if there's any color left, like on the gloves, I am rinsing and drying it in between the different colors because I don't want to introduce moisture into the pants. And now I'm coming in with the red, and you can see that this is giving us some spread, but we still have some speck. And so if I just wanted the specs to stay, then I wouldn't touch it. But I want, I'm going to have to be careful to not like go too far. So yellow speckles are going to be 
pickles are hard just because no one doesn't speckle quite as well. And that's just because like it's so such a bright color that it's hard to get good contrast. Isn't one that I'm going to let sit quite as long. The yellow could also be overtaken by some of these other hues. And then each time I come to the yarn mop, I move my hand around in multiple places. So that helps get color coverage. And I know you can't see, but I move the yarn around to try to expose more white areas. These mops aren't necessarily balanced. Um, creating here. And finally, electric violet. And initially, I'm first coming in on these areas that are more white, but also coming in a bit on some of the red areas. Hmm. Yeah, so this has definitely got a different feel to it than, for example, um, some of the other, some of the other colorway we did. And I don't think I've done, I've done this sort of technique a lot, but I haven't done it with rainbow specifically. And I'm happy with the yarn look so far, but when we add color to the other side, I think I'm going to get to keep adding color to that mop. But now I'm coming in, and not everywhere, but giving the purple some space. There. And this is a different kind of rainbow. I will be back. Uh-oh. 
Oh well. I try to re reuse gloves as much as I can. Oh, but it's really hard on a humid day like today because my hands get so sweaty that it just makes it hard. So this is, this is fun. It's rainbowy, it, but it's not going to be like in the quote proper order. It's much more like, it's much, much more random. Now, some of the color will go all the way through to the other side. And that, when I flip it, we'll decide how much of each color that we want to use. But I think I'll also do a photo. Okay, I'm about to add two photos to my Instagram stories for you guys to see one of this and one of this next to the other pan. Um, so hold on. Do, do, do. Let's do this one first. Yay. Come on. Come on. I'll have to check and see if it actually made it. Sometimes the thing freezes. Okay, and then I'm gonna do, oh my goodness, the two together. So you can see, because if you're just tuning in, I have done two versions of a rainbow today. Um, this one, which is more random, the purples, there are purples there. They don't show up very well on camera. Um, but the purple is a lot less subtle than like the orange and red definitely dominate this. Um, and I'm going to look through and see if there's any questions that I missed. Um, so, and again, if I miss a question, I'm sorry, and feel free to ask again. Um, ah, so, oh, how do you get cards with the colors on them? Um, this is a, um, the Dharma sells a poster of all their acid dye colors. And so I got that poster and I cut it up and taped the cards on top of the jars because it made it easier to like when you're looking through a, a bin of colors to find the one you want. Now the color that's on top isn't necessarily like the perfect swatch or something for how the color comes out. For example, frozen doesn't look anywhere as bright as it has been in person for me. We'll see, hopefully that's not a fluke and when I reorder it, hopefully it'll still be as bright. Um, that's the one color that I've almost run out of, of all these two ounce jars so far. Um, so that's how I did it. And this was uh, something that uh, Little Bean Loves Yarn um, that she did and shared and I was like, that is brilliant. Um, Um, ooh, alpaca with like hemp and soy and rose. That sounds beautiful all in one pot. You might get some staining on those cellulose fibers with acid dyes, but blending it with a protein fiber like alpaca um, will be lovely. Um, what's the difference between Patreon and a subscriber? That is a great question. So subscribing to YouTube is free. There's like a little subscribe button on all YouTube channels. Um, and what that does is when you subscribe to a YouTube channel, uh, it tells YouTube that you're interested in those videos. And so they'll put those videos on your feed um, or maybe even if you turn notifications on, they might even let you know with like a push notification on your phone when a new video is released. Um, so that is what, no and you know, you'll get a notification maybe if I start a live video, for example, like today. Uh, uh, and so Patreon is different. It's not associated with YouTube. Patreon is a platform that viewers can um, help support um, content creators that they enjoy. So really like being a patron and like financially backing uh, an artist of some type. And so there's some cool perks. Um, like advanced notice of shop restocks, and I offer um, coupon codes at certain levels, but all Chemnitz patrons get early access to a new video every month. 
And with that, there's a newsletter. They get to vote in polls that direct the content of that DIPOP PS series. Um, there's also like shout out options and some other things in there um, through the Patreon. Uh, some YouTubers have something called channel memberships through YouTube, and that's not something that I have. Um, so there is that. Um, what do you do if your yarn doesn't come out how you like it? That is a great question. And what I like to say is you can always over dye it, even if you go all the way to like a black. <laughs> I mean, if it's too dark, there's not much you can do after that. But um, yeah, I mean, I have color with like, so I dye like this, this is my, my hobby, but also my job now. So the yarn I dye goes into my Etsy shop um, and I sell it. And so there's some colorways that I really like, but aren't necessarily ones that I would purchase or dye intentionally for me to work with. But some people like more muted things or more vibrant things or more wild things. So there's a huge like variety in there. So not to say that selling yarn is the best thing to do with yarn you don't like, but a lot of times on various Facebook groups, when someone shares a picture of yarn and says, I, you know, ugh, I hate this, what should I do to fix it? Oftentimes there's a lot of people that are like, I love it as it is. So, you know, you could try like a, maybe even a swap or something. But uh, I think that in general, it is really easy to be happy with how the colorways come out when I am dyeing yarn for the sake of dyeing yarn. And I'm like, oh, I wonder what will happen if I try this. Or I wonder if, what will happen if I do that. It's the times when I uh, have a very specific vision in mind and then it doesn't quite work the way I thought. That's when I'm most likely to be disappointed. Um, so, yes. Um, am I wiping my, wiping my fingers off on the yarn knock? Yes. So after I sprinkle on the dye, um, I go and I close the jar and I take those fingers and that's when I'm, that's how I'm making those mock colorways today. Um, when you try to use any leftover dye in the pot, wiping the powder off on it makes sense, especially since you don't have a sink in your studio, so it's hard to rinse. Yes. Um, another thing sometimes I've done is I would take like the fingers and I would like put it in some water and just make a collection of all that leftover dye. And then I forget what it was that had me decide, okay, I'm just going to wipe my hands on the yarn. And I'm so glad I did because that's one of my favorite, favorite techniques now. Um, you're on your second round of rainbow dyeing that right now. Ooh, woodland tweed. It takes woodland tweed. It's really lovely. Um, yeah, dyeing when it's humid is hard. Um, oh yeah, please give the stream a thumbs up, everybody. Thank you, Sandra, for mentioning that. Um, have you ever done a rainbow color with just primary colors and overlapping to get secondary and tertiary? Sort of. Um, I've definitely dyed with just primary colors before, but I haven't got I haven't done that to get something that is as pure of a rainbow as like what we saw with the neons. Um, so I have not done I don't think just the primaries um, and like overlap them on the yarn. Um, I've done I've dipped into primaries for overlap. So I, I so not exactly. Um, but thanks for watching. Um, welcome to the live stream. Uh, whew. Uh, you guys, this is, this is awesome and I'm having fun and I don't have a timer set. So I'm gonna stand up and check on the yarn as I like try to stand up like I am older than I am. So, Okay, there's still some reds in there and some purples. This is going to take a little bit of time because it's the powder. And so the reason why I'm being cautious, and so we see some blues. Okay, this is going to need a fair amount of time. The reason why I'm being cautious is because if I came in and just started pressing really hard, and so some things have absorbed. Over here, there's not as much heat, so that could also be a factor. Um, but it's also possible that some things haven't dissolved yet. Um, but I don't want things to just like 
go wild. Uh, so I'm going to turn up the heat. And also I'm kind of going through like this because I don't want, like I don't want, if there's a packet of orange, I don't want that to go over the purple and then muddy it too much. Things are going to end up, oh, oh good, that's all clear. Things will end up being slightly muddy. Um, there will be some muddiness to this just because of the way some colors might spread and stuff as we flip, but I am overall very excited and should be able soonish. Yeah, there's just there's just some pockets, and so by wiggling and letting some of that die, you can see that there's some white, a <laughs> lot of white there. There could be some white left in this yarn. That'll be fine. Oh goody, but our neon is clearing pretty well. I'm hopeful, I'm very hopeful that um, there won't be a lot of bleeding at the rinsing stage. I'm even going to, you don't want to get things too hot so that they pop, but sometimes spiking that heat a little bit can help. I'm just about, okay, you little pocket right there, you clearly got a bunch of color. Um, okay, let's give you another five minutes. And I am, I'm not, I don't think I'm going to put in an ad, but I'm going to give a, take a brief break. So I'm going to turn off the audio for a moment and then I'll be back. Um, <laughs> um, yes, I'm going to flip this. Um, oh, so there's YouTube shut the stream off if it gets too many likes too soon? Huh. Um, but yeah, the, the liking feature is not in the, um, I, I didn't see the question, but the liking feature isn't in the chat itself. It's for the video up probably where the title is. Um, but no worries. Um, oh, I, so I think the reason why that some of the colors haven't struck yet isn't because of the acid concentration. Um, there's two tablespoons of vinegar per eight cups of water in here. I think that it's more of a, um, oh, why does it keep doing that? Um, I think that it is more of a, uh, uh, just that there was powder and it hadn't dissolved yet. Um, <laughs> Um, uh, yeah, no, it can be harder to hear, like, a lot of times, um, audio streams. Oh gosh, I hope the audio isn't coming in now. Yeah, no, it can be harder to hear, like, oh, um, 
the I don't remember what I was gonna say. Uh yeah, it can be hard. If I'm ever doing like a live um like if I'm doing a premiere where it's not a live stream but it's a live viewing, and so then when I do that I try to be in the chat. If I'm ever doing that, then I uh and then I often will have like the chat open on my computer and then I'll be watching on the TV. Um, which is always, it always freaks me out when I watch myself on the TV. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna hide my face and go check. All right, it's fine for audio. Yeah, I just got a um, notification from YouTube. So that was why. I always come up with like, okay, that's good. There's just a bit of color. Um, And we are going to flip. And so you can see like that the, the color compared to what we did with the like fluorescent um, there. This is a skein that I will probably need to flip multiple times because there is some, oh that one has better color penetration. There is some color penetration towards to the middle, but there's also white in the middle. So that is worth keeping in mind and trying to um, spread things out as much as possible. So the more you like shimmy, the more you shimmy the yarn as you're dyeing it, the more the colors can move and penetrate. Um, and the less you do, the more surface level. So if I just speckled and didn't touch it at all, then I probably would have to do three or four flips to get reasonable coverage. And so that's why sometimes I like to just dye 100 grams. Um, okay, where is my mask? So mask and goggles are coming back on. I like having my hair in a ponytail when I'm wearing the mask. Otherwise, I don't use ponytails very much at all. So for this colorway, it could have been helpful for me to, um, it potentially would have been helpful for me to have set this up and done aliquot for the different colors and containers. So I wouldn't have to go back into over but this time I'm starting with the purple I'm gonna start with the purple and the blue and then the green and do the reverse of what I did before because this will like shift that balance of color. So I like sapphire blue a bit better than peacock blue. The color of peacock blue is incredible, but it's a pain to work with and it doesn't go in solution very well. Oh, I guess let's do the green before. Uh, before I start moving things around. I, thought, I probably went a little too much with all these colors already but try not to worry this is i enjoy dying by feel like this and being a lot more random with how and where i am placing colors Thank uh -huh. 
But so some of this, I mean, we will probably flip more, but you can see that the shift of the hues we're seeing is going to be is different this time. Um, just because of what I put on. And I went a little heavy over here. So Yep, I probably went a little overboard, but that's okay. You always forget. It's so easy to do too much. Um, and it's too much isn't necessarily a bad thing. What's funny is that this may end up feeling a lot like a muted rainbow because if the colors mix and blend together too much, um, which is fun. Okay. Coming in with some orange. I gotta remember I'm gonna come in with the red as well. Mm -hmm. But two ounces of dye lasts a really long time. Okay. Cherry bomb. I'm like looking around for like little areas where I should add some red. And checking the mop. And this one is a lot heavier than the last one, which I will admit there's also caution when I'm dealing with fluorescent colors. And that is just because I know that you don't want to do too much because you will be washing for days. Um, So I'm definitely not going to get to dyeing the last two gray colors that we created today. Um, at least not during the live stream. What I hope to be able to achieve is to, oh good, I did set a timer, is to move this and then see if I think I need and want to add more color to like the inside and stuff. But just to show like, this is a completely different rainbow technique from this that we did first. So there is a huge amount of variety that you can do. And I do want to show off the mop. This one might look more familiar because I've done something like that in the past with these colors.
So what I might do this afternoon is I might do, even though this today it's not going to be leave no die behind because like the die is in containers and so that's not leftover, that's just die. But I might do like a, like some more rainbow-tastic kind of stream. Um, and I'm going to pull up the inspiration photo again, which is really the inspiration and the goal wasn't to hit. A lot of times I use the photo as color inspiration, sometimes technique inspiration. And this time it was palette. I wanted to use the rainbow tools and colors at my disposal and play with them and make different versions of rainbows. And so that's what we've done in a few different ways. Then I'll be showing off all the yarn in a recap that'll come out probably at the end of August. I'll be honest. <laughs> um, but if you want to die along with me, um, please create your own rainbow colorways on yarn, on roving. Hey, you can do tie-dye a t-shirt or something. You could submit it. Um, and you can submit them by using the hashtag, which is down there, the hashtag Chemnitz Dialogue on Instagram or on Facebook, uh, find this, this inspiration photo and comment on it with a photograph of the yarn you dyed and tell us a little bit about it. Um, and so that is how you can, oh, oh no, that is how you can get featured. And I'm going to check for questions. Um, have you tried RIT powder dyes? Yes. Um, so RIT powder dyes are not acid dyes. So I'm not entirely sure the type of dyes, but it's a different type of dye. You can use it on wool and on cotton. I've only, I've used the RIT liquid dyes a lot more because since they were already in liquid form, that seemed less intimidating to me when I was going to start off using a respirator mask and things like that. Um, so I did use the RIT dye powder once and I got fantastic speckles on cotton. The best speckles I've ever seen on cotton the, from all the different techniques I've tried. And so that is a big thumbs up. Um, but I haven't, I, I, I mean, I think it worked well on wool too, but a lot of dyes work well on superwash wool. So I haven't played around with the powders a ton, just once so far. Um, thank you. The, the randomness is fun and I wanted to do something, something different. But also I know that these colors won't necessarily spread quite as far. So yeah, I mean, I think, let me think, things that I want to do, maybe I should make a little list, make a little listy list. Okay, so I think I want to do um, some rainbow speckles. I want to do something with the muted rainbow. I'm not sure quite what. Um, yeah, I, I want to play with that in some kind of way. Um, uh, uh, yeah, I want to do a muted rainbow and more mops. So I think those are just off the top of my head things that I want to do this afternoon because um, I am, I won't keep streaming in the afternoon, but I think I will like set up the cameras and do one of those like mega leave no die behind type things. Um, even though it's not a leave no die behind, but I'll do like a mega stream that then I'll speed up and then film a voiceover after the fact. Um, and so that is a very easy thing for me to edit. <laughs> this is why I like doing that sometimes. Um, do I have both burners under the pan or I have two burners under it? So they're um, like here and here. Um, yes, I, I, it's a gas stove. I, I love it. Um, yeah, so it, it's a parrot. Yes, very, very parody. Um, so yeah, if you guys are ever curious about any fiber type or any dye brand and things, um, a way that you can do it, and I, it's, you can't really do this on a phone, but on a computer, I'm not sure about a tablet, but on a computer, you can search the channel. And so you can go in and search, if you search the channel for RIT, then all the videos where I mentioned RIT will, should show up. 
Um, and so that that is an, an easy way to do it. But in the past, I found that, and because sometimes I would link just to like the search because I would check the terms and be like, okay, yes, a lot of relevant videos are coming up there. But I think if people click on the link on mobile, then it just takes them to the channel page. So YouTube, please integrate search on channels for mobile. That would be great. <laughs> Thank you. Um, yeah, the goal of the, bit of the day was to make multiple different types of rainbows. And so um, I still have plans to do a few more. <laughs> uh, and yeah, it, it's also just, I guess, a way, like, there's so many things you can do with just powder. Um, and it's fun. And it doesn't have to be like, you know, you don't, you don't have to follow like a plan in your head. You can, but you can also just sort of go for it in a more random kind of way. So that is awesome and fun. Uh, oh, why am I on oh, my camera feed? Um, Uh, okay, that, oh, I want to mark this unread, because I need to read that, um, and I'm just checking on the availability. Okay, there are still some more. Ah, it looks like our DK samplers have, what is it? It looks like the DK samplers have sold out. Um, and there are still some soft yarn, so some fingering weight uh, samplers left. Um, since I still haven't dyed all of them, I would, under normal circumstances, I would love to go and just add some more DK, but I am limited with the amount of yarn that I have. So, um, will these skeins be for sale in my Etsy shop? Yes. Um, that's the plan, at least, unless I have a strict rule with the like colorways that I keep for myself. It's possible that some of these could end up like kind of like migrating over into there, but most of them definitely will be added to the shop in likely the next update. Um, I try not to, I try to only add yarn to the shop once the video has been like completely edited and stuff. So. I make a little bit of an exception for the dialogues. I have like the video, I'll film like the recap, have it mostly edited and then, um, but not exported because I try to give it. Whoa, honey, what's going on? We're going down the lunch. No, 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 12.30, sweetie. Ah. Daddy. <laughs> uh, mommy has to do Queenie's work at 12.40. At 1230 dear? I said that you, you No, I said I was gonna stop at 1230. Alright, back upstairs, so. Yeah, I did. <laughs> anyway, I lost my train of thought. So I don't remember. So I'm gonna go take up a yard. Uh, but I think probably what I was saying is that I do have a strict uh, rule on what I allow myself to keep because otherwise I would keep. Oh, how is that for timing? Otherwise I would keep way too much. Oof. Probably overdid it a tiny bit. So a lot has cleared. There is some muddiness going on, but I'm curious. What I'm curious about, and one of the things that I can do here and now is add some more liquid. So here is some water with a little bit of vinegar and I'm adding it towards the edges um, just to help. And Yeah, so there's a chance I might finish this off camera. Okay, so sometimes, like, if there's full color left on the side, it could be because, oh, maybe there's a little bit of color in the, oh, so cool, um, 
could be that there's a little bit of color left like on the side, like I see right there. Um, so that could definitely be a thing. And sometimes it could be if there is some powder that just needs to be And again, this isn't, oh, yeah, there's white in there. Um, I don't mind if there's some white in this. I think white is beautiful. Oh, man. How is this doing? That's cool. Is there? Ooh, that is going to be pretty. Okay. Um, Uh, I'll admit that I'm hungry too. Okay, I'm going to wait five minutes and then we'll move it. So this is the, the hard thing with, um, this is the hard thing with, with filming and stuff is that sometimes there's like these waiting steps. So a lot of times what I do is I might be filming two videos at once. So I might have one video on one side of the stove, one on the other. Um, or I might do a low immersion technique like this and then do some countertop things that I steam. So some things it's easier, it's easier to time, like if I'm gonna steam set something, how long that might take um, versus some other techniques. So um, yeah, that, that is something, but yeah. <laughs> oh yes, real, real life. Um, yeah, no, it's great that they went back up. Uh, hopefully the, it's hard. So it's hard, like having to film with everyone home is, is hard because I film in my kitchen, which means that in order for it to not be super noisy, they, we don't have a basement. We have like a finished third floor. So it means that they're up there and it's hot up there. We do have like a little, like the house is air conditioned. The third floor is hot. We have like a little like floor AC unit, which helps a lot, but I mean, it's hard because it just limits their mobility within the house. Um, and so that is, then I, then I just feel guilty. Um, um, yes, the colors are a lot darker on the stream than they appear in, on Instagram for sure. That's one reason why I try to post on Instagram. And another reason why I always do recaps after live streams so you guys can see what the finished dry yarn looks like. Um, oh wait, the... Okay, and so then the other thing I'm going to say, um, just to uh, plug the summer set again, um, summer mystery yarn. Uh, I'm just popping that in because we released more slots. Yeah, so there's just sock left, um, and the... You get 100 grams of yarn, five 20 gram mini skeins, all dyed following the technique of one video. Um, so the original set that I released, the original sets, those were all dyed in the videos that I recorded. And then since uh, you guys asked me to dye up some more, I did. And so these will still be labeled nights one through four um, to correspond to the night that, um, that I, to, to the video that features the, like the type of dye and the type of technique and everything that was used to make them. Um, so that way you can, if you want, wait to unwrap it until the video. But there are so many different kinds of colorways. Like there's some more subtle, there's some more vibrant. Um, and it's all like really fun. And I think that, um, yeah, and so there's a project bag. Um, and actually, let me grab the project bag. showed these in my announcement. Do, do, do. Let me get something bigger. I'm hiding the, I've already attached a stitch marker to this one. So I'm trying to, I would spoil the stitch markers, but huh, it's a little like gold and it's so blown out, but it's a gold holographic yarn sun. So this is the yarn that is part of the cabinets logo. And I turned it into a little sun. And then it says they say, there it is. They say Covenant's Creations. And it is 
um, like a holographic glitter. So it shifts rainbows and it's sparkly and fun. And so then I wrap up the yarn and put it inside these little zipper pouches. And then that's what will be mailed off. Um, so it's fun. Like making these has been really, really fun. Um, and oh my favorite, that looks so cool. Unfortunately, the like holographic like glitter in here is so subtle that I don't think that will show up on camera. Um, but so uh, yeah, these homemade. I mean, I didn't make I didn't make the bags, but I did the I did that the the iron on stuff. So, <laughs> so it's just another. Uh, element of fun from me to all of you. Uh, and I am filming a little vlog. Um, so probably with this night will be a vlog and I talk about like making the extras. So this restock, I'll talk about that and then the, show all the different stitch markers. The stitch markers do vary um, because I, um, I ran out. That was... I ran out of the ones that I made for the first um, round, and yeah, and so and then there wouldn't be time for me to order more. Okay, this is basically good. What we want to check now is the interior, and there was a little bit of some bleed in there, but actually with that white. There's plenty of color in there, so that is good. And let's check this one. Um, I don't mind some white. What I don't want is like huge, huge white patches to make it feel unbalanced. But there's some more like pastels, but I think I might just add a touch more. Um, actually, I'm going to call it. I am going to call it. Um, this is beautiful and fun. And what I'm going to do now is actually increase the amount of water in here. Oh, I have a great way to do this. And it's hot, too. This was water plus vinegar from when I did the gray. Um, I'm going to add some of this onto the neon as well, even though that had almost completely cooled. Um, I still need to swing set my other yarn mop, but... Um, Having more, what's funny is that this is like the classic rainbow. It definitely feels more muted because of the way that the colors have blended. Um, but I'm going to do more with this combination of colors, I think, in that um, time lapse video, which could even come out soon, maybe before the or early July, maybe. Um, so we'll see. But that's, that's my plan for the afternoon. I think. Um, but anyway, yeah, so I have to um, steam set that last yarn mop. And that's about it. Oof, look at that swirl of color. Huh. Um, <laughs> thank you guys so much. Thank you guys so much for tuning in and please, please, please subscribe. Like, as I said, um, subscribing and liking videos, commenting on videos, engaging in live streams, that is the best way for you guys to support the channel because YouTube sees that and then they might recommend the videos to other people. And so that, yeah, that helps. It, it just helps. That's the biggest way. And if you enjoy the content, then it doesn't cost anything. Um, and so I've mentioned here like other monetary ways to support the channel through like affiliate links, Patreon, and the summer sets. But yeah, I mean, otherwise, like the just watching and engaging with the content is the biggest, biggest thing that you guys can all do. Um, 
Did I say market bag? I said project bag. Um, so that little like zipper, little pouch that I brought, it's, it definitely fits like a hundred grams. So it could be like, it's, it's a size that would maybe fit like a pair of socks or something that you're working on. Um, or it could then become like a notions bag or something like that. But um, I like having like small projects and in little bags. Um, oh, goody, goody. No spoilers. And that's, well, you can share like however you want. The colorways, I will say each night, there's maybe one night when there's not a lot of variety, but most nights there is a wide range of colorways. And that is all I'm going to say about that. Um, oh, thank you guys so much. Oh, like my heart. I'm like uh, just doing, uh, I, I wasn't sure if I was able, going to be able to do some kind of summer series. And I definitely had to switch gears because I had like a whole plan. The plan was always to do sets versus a sampler of multiple nights. But the problem was that just like when my time to film got super truncated, I had to be a little more creative in the types of things that I could do. And so I started filming, not knowing if, and like the, the folders of the files are all like SMSMS, maybe question mark, <laughs> because I wasn't sure if I was gonna be able to make it happen. And then I decided, yep, we're, we're doing this, we're going for it. But, and I will say, in terms of samplers, uh, Hanukkah, I, I started playing for Hanukkah. Again, I'm not sure if I'm going to do the exact vision from what I've originally planned, but Hanukkah is, I'm still planning on, um, spots won't be as limited as they were for the summer. I'm planning on dying a lot. And I, the yarn should be here tomorrow for Hanukkah and I'm excited. I've got some like really good ideas, even though I might, again, be shifting the plan from what it originally was, but I, um, you know, those plans that I'm having to reshift and think, maybe those will go to 2021. Um, so yeah, but it, it's fun and I like, and so for Hanukkah, then I have like each night there's a new video and then yarn time wrap dyed in the video. So that's a bit different. Um, but, oh, thank you. I'm glad that you think the bag is pretty. It, like, yeah, it, it took a little bit of finagling, but I'm really, really happy with how it turned out. And um, I love my uh, dye cutter. <laughs> um, yes, the, the replay of this video will be available later. Um, if you ever do a kitchen remodel, think about a pot filler over the stove. Oh, my gosh. I dream of not not even as much a kitchen remodel i think that we would potentially do bathroom remodels first but i dream of having like a studio space <laughs> um if i have like the ability like like I, the re i'm not there's a limit like i can't scale up my yarn production much more than what i i do currently just because of i've got one stove and like that limits the rate that I can dye yarn. Um, but like, it would be nice to have just like a dedicated filming studio. And so then I would still like my mostly do small batches, but it would be nice to play with doing a large batch and trying to do like a hundred skeins in a day, <gasps> like 12, like when I, when I was like, okay, I've got 16 prepped. Ooh, this could almost be a record, <laughs> you know? <laughs> Yes, 2020 is the year for rethinking things. And I just want to thank you. You guys, your support of me in general is phenomenal. And I am so thankful and appreciative that you all are letting me do something I'm so passionate about and turn it into a business. Like that is amazing. But especially like through like the pandemic and everything and having to shifts the way I do some things. You guys have been incredibly supportive and I really, really appreciate it. And yes, a huge thank you to my family for making this all possible. Um, but anyway, I am going to sign off now because I know my kids are hungry and I'll be honest, I'm hungry. And yeah, so as I, I don't know why I'm putting my hair back up. Um, oh, I need to turn off that one stove though. Should not forget that. But anyway, uh, I am Rebecca from Chemnitz. Subscribe, like, uh, go and check out the uh, 
the summer mystery sets that are now available. I dropped that link in one more time. Uh, yeah, and again, oh, social distance, social distance hug from me to you. Uh, and oh, oh, as I keep remembering everything, um, if you want to be featured in the, no, 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 that's not what I wanted to move. Okay, if you want to be featured in the live stream recap, uh, on Instagram, use the hashtag Cabinet Dialogue, and on Facebook, find this picture, this picture on my Facebook page, and just reply with a photo comment. And then I will pick as many pictures as I can to include. And it's funny because I'm now talking and I see myself actually moving around the pan. And blah. Okay, the delay sometimes is a little weird when you're sitting here looking and watching. But anyway, I am going to head out, and I hope you guys have a wonderful day. And thank you so much for watching. And the button. <laughs> and then I sit and awkwardly wait. Do, 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 do. So that way I know I said goodbye on the thing. Now I'm singing a random song. Oh, but I should stop singing because I don't think I'm using a melody, but I don't want anyone to try to clean it. But anyway, let's try doing this button this time. <laughs>